Hello, global, global supply chainers, and welcome to our first live event of SC0X. Thank you very much for joining us. I've today um, invited two of our very foremost people here. I have Dr. Eva Ponce with me. He, she's the executive director of our program, and she graduated, graduated from uh, University of Madrid and now is a research associate here with the Center of Transportation and Logistics, focusing on omni-channel distribution strategies. Together with Chris, she has been developing our program here for the past, is it five years now, four years? We, we started in fall 2015, and okay. since January 2016 to now, we have so developed So it's three years now, yeah. and she's running, uh, I think it's the 20th course or the 25th course. We already run 21 courses, 21 courses. and now we have five courses live. Yeah. Um, pretty exciting times CFX. here. Yeah. Pretty, pretty exciting times. Pretty exciting, pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Um, uh, I have invited Eva to talk today to you about the MicroMasters program in its entirety and the benefits you have from joining our five courses here. With us is also Brittany Collins. Mm -hmm. Brittany is originally from Pittsburgh, has a bachelor degree in marketing and spent seven years in the steel industry, has a lot of work experience and then decided to also do our MicroMasters program. Yeah. So she has a lot of inside knowledge about how it really feels to be on your side and we are hoping uh, that she has a lot of tips for you of how to actually succeed in our yeah. program so thank you very much both of you for joining me today my name is alex rotkopf i'm the course lead for sc0x um, i'm a research scientist at the center of transportation and logistics focusing mainly on humanitarian and um, global health problems let's get started with our work today um i've prepared a little agenda that i'm going to share with you in just a moment here we go um so my plan for today is introduce you to the big picture of the micromasters program then do a deep dive in what you can expect from the course at hand supply chain analytics and how the course logistics works and into that we massage all the tips uh from Brittany and her experiences and knowledge. What you can do with us here is you can interact with us because we have set up Slido and the fact that you can actually hear us right now and see us is you've taken the first step because you have logged into Slido and you see that screen on the left-hand side, the video, and on the right-hand side, you have the option to ask us questions. So any question that is burning, that is important to you, just put it in there and don't forget to put in your name. We're going to only answer questions that have names on it. That's <laughs> our policy here. Um, and we are going to try to cover those in the next uh, 60 minutes. What we also have is we can ask you questions. Um, that's called the poll. And if you switch from the questions to the polls tab, you can um, answer right now. I have one poll online, which is, do you already have MOOC experience? And people are responding to that pretty well. You can see here we have about 30%. So it's pretty evenly distributed across mm -hmm. the first three. So we have a lot of people that don't have any MOOC experience. They're newbies, so we need to take care of mm -hmm. them. Um, they, then we have about 24% of people that actually have done online courses already, but never really completed an online course. So today is our day to convince you to perhaps <laughs> convince yeah. um, SC0X as your first course. But then we have also very experienced learners already with 33%. Interesting, we also have 13% of people that already done a MITx uh, supply chain course. So there must be people that have perhaps taken SC3x or SC4x. Maybe these are our CTAs, our community teaching assistants. That could be too. 12% out of 150 people watching. Yeah. Well, could could be be. That, some that, of them. That there are some. One question, Brittany, for you. So when, when you started with the first SE1X course, yeah. did you have any a MOOC, previous MOOC experience? I did not. So I first saw about the MicroMasters, or actually not even the MicroMasters, but the SC1X course on Facebook. So it's really important to be able to like interact and learn about new opportunities through social media. And so I saw it advertised on Facebook mm -hmm. and that was my first exposure to edX and to MITx. When did you start? SC1X in 2000? 
Yeah, 2016, 2016, so early 2016. And at that time, um, SC0X, the course that you're taking now, um, wasn't offered. So I started with SC1X, but I can share with you later about SC0X because I did take that as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So my next point on the agenda is to learn about the MicroMaster program in its entirety. So I uh, let me quickly switch you to the video. So Eva, you are going to cover the big picture. Sure. Introduce us to our program, please. Definitely. Thank you so much, Alex, and welcome again to this uh, live event for LC0X. So um, who are we? We are the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. And this is a center that started more than 40 years ago with the mission of creating supply chain innovation and driving it into practice. I wanted to highlight here that every single thing that we do in this center is totally um, industry oriented, is very, very applied. So we have three main legs. The first one is research, and there are more than 15 full-time researchers at the center uh, leading different researchers, uh, research uh, lines. Uh, Chris Kaplis, Dr. Kaplis, is, uh, he's leading the freight lab. Uh, we have Mattia Wickenbank uh, leading the mega city logistic lab. Uh, Jarrod Gossel uh, leading the humanitarian logistic lab and many other researchers working in different areas of supply chain management. We also have outreach. Uh, our my colleague Jim Rice, he is leading the outreach part of the center. Um, this is all about our partners. Our partners are companies, and these companies uh, collaborate with us. They offer master thesis and capstones project for our SEM uh, residential learners. Um, they also um, collaborate with us in research projects. And again, research projects that are uh, industry oriented and industry applied. And the third leg is education. So this MicroMasters program is part of the education leg in, in, at CTL. We started more than 20 years ago with the Supply Chain Management Master Degree. This, this is the number one master degree in supply chain management in this field. This is running by Dr. Bruce Arson. Um, for the last 20 years. So it's, a, it's a, a master degree program in the area with a very good reputation. Um, Apple, Google, uh, important companies are coming here to recruit our learners to, to work in these companies. We have been also running a PhD in logistics and also a bunch of uh, different courses for executive, executive education. Um, more recently in fall 2015, uh, President Rave, Rafael Rave at MIT announced the first MicroMaster program. And this is the program that you are now a uh, part of that. So uh, let's go to the next uh, slide. Um, here, what I want to highlight is that the MicroMasters and those that just enroll in SE0X, you are now part of a huge community of SEX learners. Uh, we have so far more than uh, a quarter of a million, more than 270,000 learners that have been taking at least one SEX course. 17,000 of these learners are verified learners. We have two types of learners in our courses. We have audit people. These are learners that just enroll for free in our program. And verified learners, these are the learners that are pursuing for the certificate. And we will uh, explain more about what it means to be a verified learner in a SEX course, and in particular in SE0X. We have issued more than 26,000 certificates in total. Um, 1,273 uh, credentials. These are people that has, uh, have completed the five courses plus the comprehensive final exam. So we have now a huge community of MicroMaster holders all around the world. And I need also to say here that this is a global program. We have learners from more than 190 countries, and we are very proud of that. Uh, the most represented country is still United States, 
the second country is India, and the third one is Brazil, but the third position is always uh, Mexico, Brazil, Canada. We have also a good representation of Europe. We have a, a good representation of learners from Germany, from Spain, uh, from France. But the beauty things is that we have learners from all over the world. We have people from Nigeria, from Bangladesh, from Bora Bora, from the small island uh, in the world. So, and this is something that definitely uh, bring a lot of value to, to this program. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Yes, in terms of the guiding principles, there are two um, guiding principles behind this program, and these are MIT and CTL principles. The first is to educate the world for free. That's why all of our contents are available for free to anyone anywhere that enrolled in any of our SEX courses. And the second principle here is to provide a credential at a reasonable amount of, of money. Indeed, uh, the cost of the credential, that is $200 per course, is a, uh, only cover the administrative cost associated to issue the certificate, but it's not covering the cost of the real, the actual cost of this program. So this is one of the principles, democratize the knowledge in supply chain management. In terms of the SEX courses, and in particular, in terms of SEC0X course, the course that you are now enrolled, we are working, um, believe me that this team and the course lead, Alex in particular, our teaching assistant, Andrea, for this course, and our amazing uh, community of teaching assistants, they all, all of them are going to work in order to uh, provide the best learning experience to you through this course. We are also working in providing a rigorous assessment because of the certificate. So there is one part in the course that is learning just for uh, collaboration, just to have fun and to learn as much as you can. And there is another component that is assessment. Um, since we are going to provide a certificate at the end of the course, we need to be sure that you have reached the basic knowledge in, in, in this course in particular. That's why you are going to be and you need to pass some graded assignment, midterm and final exam through the course. And we are going to uh, try to ensure the rigorous uh, of this assessment. So, um, yeah, switch to the slide let's, deck again. let's uh, switch and let's talk a bit about the value of this program. Um, we, the program includes five MOOCs, five massive open online courses. You are enrolled now in the very first one, Supply Chain Analytics, SEC 0 x uh, After it, we encourage you to take the courses in sequence. However, we know that sometimes this was not possible. This is the example of Brittany. When she start, started, we only have a one course. And it seems that we have some learners, at least, that already took uh, part of our uh, courses because yeah. we have 12% saying that they took MIT X MicroMasters. So yeah, and courses. we know this is happening because we are not enforcing sure. that. It's not mandatory. However, <clears throat> it's recommended. We highly recommend to take in sequence. It also depends on the background of the student and many other things. But in any case, after uh, SE0X, we are offering supply chain fundamentals, then supply chain design, supply chain dynamics, and supply chain technology and system. Five SEX courses all about supply chain management. At the end of the five courses and only for those that took the course and completed the course as a verified learner and passed the five courses, these are the only ones that can take the final comprehensive and proctor exam. And this is something that is mandatory in order to earn the MicroMaster credential. The MicroMaster credential by itself is a standalone certificate. And we learn that our learners, they are posting in the LinkedIn and they are using to apply for a job in supply chain management. And the credential is also a pathway for credits um, to apply for a master degree here at MIT or at any other university that is recognizing now the MicroMaster credential as a pathway for credit. Let's go to the next slide. In terms of uh, the big picture and the contents, so the three first courses, SE0, 1, and 2, these three first courses are more about conceptual models. In SE0X, and Alex is going to give you a more deep um, uh, journey in, in the contents of SE0X, you are going to uh, learn the basic analytic tools 
in uh, supply chain management. In supply chain fundamentals, we focus more on inventory management, demand forecasting, and transportation management. And then we move into the network design world, just to apply quantitative model in order to design a distribution network, for instance, just an example. The two last courses, SC3X and SC4X, are more qualitative courses. They are more close to the real life. We are adding here complexity. We are trying to bring a uh, expert for industry and we are trying to bring this complexity for the day-to-day -day and real life problems and in SE4X we want you to learn about how to deal with big data how to learn uh, tools and techniques that help you to analyze this big data and how to organize and how to manage the information flow in a supply chain management. And at the very end, the final and comprehensive uh, exam just to earn the credential. So these are the five courses that we are offering. So Brittany, you completed already completed the five courses yeah. plus the CFX. You already earned the MicroMaster credential in May 2000. 2017. So how was your experience through the five courses? Because we know, we know that there is a lot of effort behind yeah. that and a lot of hours, a lot of nights. So let us know a bit about your experience and also tell the audience about uh, your main takeaways of these courses. Sure. So as Eva mentioned, I did the journey through all five courses and through the comprehensive final. Um, I was a working full-time professional. So um, during my workday, I was not able to spend any time towards the courses. So I was really working on this in the nights and on the weekends. Um, but what I found was that it was beneficial to me. It was worth that extra effort and that extra time because I was able to take some of that and apply it towards my job. So I think the courses that um, stood out the most to me were SC2X and SC4X. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I enjoyed all of them. I thought that there was value. And what you really find through the journey is that supply chain has so many opportunities. So yeah. you really get exposed to different areas of the business. Um, it's not just about transportation, right? There's procurement, mm -hmm. there's um, data systems. So it was really important to me to be able to um, do the journey through uh, the courses and be exposed to all of that. Yeah, we just received a flash a flood warning alert. Sorry about the sound. <laughs> <laughs> we hope we are going to be safe yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, excellent, Brittany. Thank you so much for sharing this, uh, your, your experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Let me pick up some questions. I forgot totally about the questions. Um, because we were so much into our yeah. MicroMasters pro program already. So perhaps one that is by Murali, we can just answer right away. After the MicroMaster credential, would MIT have an online master degree program in supply chain management in the future? So I think he's mm -hmm. kind of looking towards what the path is yeah, again sure. about MicroMasters and then doing something on campus yeah so i'm going to let's move to the yes so answering your question uh, the offer that we have now is a pure residential on campus so after completing the micromaster credential you can apply for a residential master degree one full semester on campus we are not offering uh, so far an online master degree so let's uh, go yeah perhaps one other question that sure uh, comes in along with the certificate stuff uh, is by, by Larry. I think that is important too, because he asked how our MicroMaster um, credential compares to other cases like the um, APEX or CPIM or sure. CSCP. Yeah. Um, CSCP, yeah, yeah. CSCP. CSCP. these Here professional certifications. Exactly. Yeah, this is a, a great question, Larry. So the MicroMaster credential, so mm, the name is MicroMasters because it's the first part of a master degree. So the, um, the contents you are going to find in the MicroMaster are equivalent to master's degree courses here at MIT. It's pure MIT content um, in terms of intensity, in terms of the content by itself, in terms of the number of uh, great assignment practice problems you need to solve. So I would say it's very intense. 
is equivalent to the level of education we are providing here at MIT at master degree level. That means that once you complete the MicroMaster, is why you can apply to a full uh, master's degree uh, residential program. The professional certifications, these are great programs. Um, I would say that these are more kind of specific, are very specific and very oriented to, to, to a specific topics and specific questions. Um, for professionals, I know that uh, they are great programs. Indeed, some of uh, um, people that already earned the APIC certificate, CSCMP, they are joining the MicroMaster because they want to continue and pursue for a master degree. So mm -hmm. this is a pathway also to a master degree. Okay, cool. Yeah. So in terms of the of the courses, as I mentioned, five courses, the cost per course, if you are pursuing for the certificate, is $200. However, if you just want to have access to the content by itself, you can enroll for free. You don't need to pay anything. Uh, to pay $200 is just to pursue for this certificate. In terms of effort, in terms of effort, in each course, our learners reported that they are spending in between eight to 12 hours per week of effort. Um, in terms of the structure, each course includes eight weeks of content. You will need to pass one meter exam, one week we dedicated just to the meter exam, one week dedicated to the final exam, and we are providing two weeks off just before the meter to give you time to prepare for the meter exam and one week off before the, before the final exam. So you will have time to prepare for this final exam. A total of 13 weeks, because we include here the week zero, this is just the logistic, the week that most of you already uh, did in this course and it's just informative. It's just to share with you the syllabus, how the course work, the honor code, and all of the rules around this course. Um, yeah, the total cost of the program is $1,200 in order to complete the five courses plus the CFX. Let's move to the next one. In terms of the value proposition, so most of our learners, they reported that they are doing because they really want to promote and, and to, to have a career development. We also know that some companies, General Electric is an example, we have uh, Expeditor, we have more companies that they are offering this to the employees. And this is a way to train their employees in supply chain management. So we have here, uh, I'm happy when, when I, let's go, let's go to the next slide. When I, I learn from my learners that they got a job and they send a note to us and say, hey, we, I, I finally, I got a job, I passed the interview thanks to this program. So this is really uh, something that, that uh, we are very proud of that. Mia is an example. She got a job in Akamai recently. Uh, Will, Will is from Australia and he, he moved from a different field to supply chain management and now he's, he's managing a team of people working in supply chain management. The third uh, uh, path for, for the credential, let's go to the next one, is a pathway for credit. Um, you complete the program, you earn the MicroMaster credential, and then you can apply to a master degree. Here at MIT, you can apply to the MIT residential program, the 10-month program. You can apply to the blended master degree, five-month a, a five five month program here at MIT, one full semester, or you can apply to a master degree in currently more than 18 different universities all around the world. We have universities in Australia, universities in Latin America, universities in the uh, United States, and universities in Europe that they are offering a, a master degree that recognizes the MicroMaster credential as a pathway for this master degree. In the case of the blended here at MIT, we are uh, convalidating the MicroMaster credential for a full semester here. 42 credits, uh, units of credits, are um, this uh, credential is equivalent to that. So a student only need to spend one full semester here on okay. campus. So it's a cool pathway if you want to study at MIT. Essentially it prepares you for our courses here on campus, right? Yeah, this prepares to you. However, you need to apply and you need to be selected. Mm. So only 40 uh, people are admitted per uh, year. Yeah. So it's very competitive. So I have uh, two learners asking about that specifically. So sure. one, Jim is asking if it is actually uh, a substitute for the GRE to apply 
uh, for the admission? Sure. Yes, Jim, this is an excellent question. So you need to go, if you earn the credential and you apply for the blended uh, master degree, you need to go exactly to the same uh, admission process with one main difference. That is exactly the one that you point. You do not need to provide any GRE or GMAT because we are going to look into your micro master um, scores mm -hmm. in your uh, in the scores in the each of the five SEX courses plus the CFX. Mm -hmm. So for the blended program, we do not ask for any GRE or GMAT. We are just looking into your performance through the micro master program. And I guess for our learners, it's also perhaps important to know how the weight is. So I don't know. You probably won't, won't don't want to say. A number put a number on that but how much weight do you post on how they performed in the micromasters when you select them for the program here okay so this is one part of the selection process as i mentioned the rest of the uh, thing that the committee is looking into are exactly the same as the traditional residential program that means we are looking into a video that we ask you to prepare to understand your motivation and to see your skills to present in public um we are also looking into an uh, you need to prepare a capstone uh, project proposal okay. we are looking into the custom project proposal you need also to provide uh, letters of recommendation so you need to go through the whole selection process and every single thing count mm -hmm. um yeah i would say that definitely performance is one of the things that we are looking into that and yeah uh, we are considering okay. as part of the selection okay. process but it's not the only thing we are considering considering that makes sense yeah. that makes sense so you have to have that whole bouquet of different components in yes. mind and it's not like we focus on something specifically right definitely definitely yeah. so Brittany is an example yeah. of a learner she completed the MicroMaster credential and now she just started into the MIT supply chain management residential, residential. program mm -hmm. the 10-month program so tell us about your your journey and why did you decide to join this program and why did you apply? Sure. So it's a dream to be at MIT, first of all. Um, it was definitely an attraction to me when I was doing the online courses to know that I was challenging myself to the level of the education that MIT can provide. Um, and then to be able to take the accomplishments that I did online and convert that into being here in person was an amazing experience. So I elected to apply to the residential program because of kind of my years of experience in the industry and my interest in pivoting careers. So uh, the residential and the blended both have extreme benefits. It's just um, as you consider that later on in your journey, you can decide if you are looking for the 10 month offering with a little bit more career support, or mm -hmm. if you are just looking to accelerate your career, perhaps within your same industry. Yeah, this is a great explanation. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah. So moving on, we've covered uh, a lot about our MicroMasters program in its entirety and how it's set up and uh, what the benefits are and how it may even go further to a master's degree at MIT. And now I want to move to our uh, course at hand as C0X, because I promised that we are going to talk about that a little bit. And they are enrolling as C0X, yeah. so right. we should so cover that. We should absolutely <laughs> cover that. So take, let's take a closer look at where we are right now. So currently we have more than 13,000 learners enrolled. So my number is a little off because I did the slide deck yesterday. Um, we have more than 760 verified learners already. So numbers are growing very good. Um, our medium learner age is 30, where 60% is between 26 and 40 years old, which means that I guess we have a lot of professional people in our course. So it means that we have a lot of experience, which makes me hope that we have great discussions in the forums too. If those learners get active, we will have really interesting uh, components and discussions in our uh, forum. That's a good thing to see. I need to say that every single time that they go through the forums, I really learn something new yeah. because we have such a great uh, group of, uh, an amazing group of learners. That makes you always think, right? So Definitely. there's always a new perspective and yeah. you think, oh, wow, I haven't think, thought about it this way or that way because you have all these kinds of learners that come from different backgrounds with different um countries that have different approaches to problems or that face different problems right so that's pretty interesting to look at that um 
We have 88% um, that have a college degree or higher, so that's probably to be expected because it's a not an, an advanced degree, but you need to have some prior knowledge to, to work through our course and have interest in that, typically. Though I would say anybody with a high school diploma can succeed in our course, yeah, right? I saw one question that looked at, I'm a high school graduate, uh, is it, can I take that course? Definitely, if you're interested, there is no hurdle to for you doing that. If, you're, yes. if your math background in the high school was reasonable, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, in May 2017, when we did the in-person uh, comprehensive final exam, uh, two twins, they, they, they were high schoolers and ah, they came nice. and I asked for the passport and they told me my mom is in the, at the door with the passport and say, what? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> say, no, I'm a high schooler and say, great. And they pass and they pass with a very good score. Right. So, so this is possible and we have two high schoolers that already completed that. Nice, nice. So <laughs> no worries if, uh, if you don't have an advanced degree, that's not a prerequisite here. Mostly it's interest in, com interest in commitment. Yeah. yeah. As Maeva mentioned, uh, it's a reflection of the entire world. We have 168 countries currently um, enrolled, or people from 160 countries enrolled in our ST0X course. Usually the US is leading, currently it's 25%. India is second in line with above 13%. Again, Brazil is the third place. Yeah. Um, no, Canada. Canada is the third, is the third, third place. place. I switched my. Yeah, but they are always. They, they're always the, going yeah. back and forth. And yeah. your home country is represented with 1.7 percent. Thank you for my, bringing that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always took... appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and my home country is um, with hard on 24, 2.4 percent. But I think if we would take the entire Europe as a comparison, we would be better in, in so just the number of sure. population we, we right that 25 percent <laughs> of our people uh, of our enrolled students are women at least those that reported yes it. and this is something that yeah we, we we really want to encourage more females taking yeah. this program yeah absolutely yeah this is something that is happening in general in MOOCs and in particular in SEM so yeah but step by step yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need more encouragement more learners like Brittany yeah, yeah. that's Right. Um, so moving on, uh, I wanted to take one poll uh, across the topics that we are going to offer in SC0X. And there we go. I already see some responses. While I talk through, take your time, answer um, what topics you are looking forward to. I'm just curious uh, what's interesting to you. So our course is essentially set up into two parts. So we have the first four content weeks which will be prescriptive modeling. And we have the second, after the midterm, we have a second set of four weeks of content, which will be predictive and descriptive modeling. So you have already entered week one. All of you have already checked out, hopefully some of the videos that Chris recorded for basic functions in algebra. And that part is really simply just to get you set up, make sure that you have your algebra correctly. and get you warmed up also to how our course and our system works with putting in the numbers, putting in equations and stuff. So that's not that exciting, I guess, for most of you. But we wanted to make sure that we can, um, that everybody has the same starting point, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, then in week two, which we are going to release tomorrow, uh, we are going to start with unconstrained optimization and afterwards also take a peek already into constraint optimization. Those two topics are very dear to us because we think they are at the core of how you understand better supply chain supply chains and how you come to good supply chain management decisions. Yeah. Unconstrained optimization, uh, one application for that is inventory management. Mm -hmm. So if you want to understand how inventory management works, how an enterprise resource planning tool actually ca comes up with the number of how much you should order or how much inventory you should hold, you need to understand unconstrained optimization because it tells you how to minimize or maximize something. And we are just doing a bare introduction to get you set up. You don't need to do it later on in SC1X. We are going to cover inventory management and you're not going to minimize cost or maximize profit all the time, but you need to have that intuition of two things that or more things that are working against each other, right? There's always a trade-off. That's kind of the story of unconstrained optimization. Yeah. We want to make sure that you have that in mind. I know that for many of you, that is a pain, 
I don't know how you felt about it when you did it. The, the first half of the course was actually a little easier for me. It's ah, okay. the second half. That, it's the second yeah. half with the subject yeah. stuff. Okay. And we need to say this depends a lot on the math background yeah. that you have. Yeah. For yeah. those learners that have a strong math background, these weeks are easier. For those that this, the back, math background is not as strong, then maybe you need to spend a, a little bit more effort during the, this first part. But in any case, the material is preparing to help you to go through that even if you have not a strong math background yeah, yeah. absolutely we have set it up so that anybody with a high school degree can yeah. succeed in that Definitely. process you just need to invest yeah. maybe a little more time to work through the practice problems so unconstrained optimization keep in mind that it, this is just for you to be prepared to understand inventory management that's i think the best story mm -hmm. there is for uh, unconstrained optimization constrained optimization is looking at if you have limitations on resources. So you want to maximize profit or minimize cost of, say, a distribution network, and you have constrained carriers, you have constrained inventory, that's where you need constrained optimization. So any problem that relates to production planning, that relates to network design, it's all essentially a constrained optimization problem. And we are going to cover that in detail in SC2X, and here we are just setting you up to understand that better. Yeah. That's why we also have week three, which is inter integer and mixed integer programming and network models, which is just the natural evolution of constraint optimization. You need to have that zero one option to open or close a certain warehouse or yeah. use or not use a certain carrier. That's where integer and mixed integer programming comes in. Yeah, so, but let's say that we are going to focus more here on the math and how to set the model. And yeah. then in SC2X, they have more applications and real uh, problems in yeah. order to apply these techniques. So, but, but we are offering real problems here too, right? Definitely. But it's more, more yeah. about giving you a toolkit. The way I think about that is you're getting a toolkit to yeah. succeed in supply chain management. And yeah. that toolkit will go through or be with you through all our courses and hopefully through your uh, through your career either on campus like Brittany yeah. or later on in your professional life yeah and all of the courses are industry oriented industry applied yeah, yeah this is our approach for every single thing we are doing here at CEL I think that's one of the biggest benefits to this program is that I didn't have a strong math background but with the stories and the way the problems are set up it feels r real to you yeah. that it's an industry problem and you can kind of make connections to what you're doing at your job. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so the last part of that first chunk of prescriptive modeling is algorithm, algorithms and approximations because you know that better than uh, anybody. In practice, it is oftentimes hard to get data, hard to solve problems. And that's why you need to have a way to approximate things that's what we are covering here and how to set up algorithms to, because you sometimes need to develop a step-by-step -step recipe to solve something essentially to make a computer solve something for you and that's why you need the algorithms and we just want to make sure that you have a good understanding and a good idea of how you can do that that's why we spent a whole week on that too after that in the second chunk of our um, course we are going to move to predictive and descriptive modeling so essentially it's kind of moving from the, a deterministic world that we have assumed uh, before into a stochastic world. Mm -hmm. um, and we start first with distributions and probability because that's also something that most of you know uh, very well. The world is not certain, right? We, yeah. we oftentimes don't know exactly what is going to happen. We don't know how demand will come to us. We don't know if our service time is going to be always set the same or if it fluctuates. We don't know if our supplier is going to deliver always at the same time or if it fluctuates, right? That's where uncertainty comes in and where we need probability distributions. And we're going to cover in detail in week uh, seven, distributions and probability theory, just to set you up because that's kind of a core to anything that will follow in all the courses. You need to understand how distributions work. Afterwards, in week eight, we are going to do statistical testing. And I know that not so many people like Our that, fan. like <laughs> are a big fan of that. But it is a really valuable tool to understand if something changes. So if you're changing your production 
in some way and you have an average from before and now you're collecting sample data on how, for example, service time changed, you need a tool to check if you have actually changed something or not. And that is, that is the essence of this statistical testing. And I myself, I'm using that quite a bit. Though I'm a modeler, I have to figure out if my probability distributions that I'm assuming are actually following a certain pattern. So I, I use a statistical test to just check if the data that I collected follows a certain distribution or not. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need hypothesis testing. It's not a big secret, but it takes some time and effort to get into it. And I know that is a hurdle for some. Regression, also important to understand relations between independent and dependent variables, right? And my go-to case here is always uh, freight rates, because I think that mm -hmm. the most intuitive way to think about it for us supply chain management yeah. people is, I want to understand how how I why I pay certain levels of freight rates. It's it fluctuates somehow, and I don't know how it's influenced. So it may be influenced by distance. It may be influenced by truck full truckload or not full truckload. It may be influenced by refrigerated or not refrigerated. I can do that with simple linear regression. Find out how certain independent variables load on the dependent variable, and that's why we need regression to understand that better. And we are doing just the pure basics in terms of linear regression. Nothing fancy, nothing too complicated mm -hmm. here. And lastly, um, we have to think about simulation models because as the world gets more complex, as we have more uh, pro um, no, more uh, uncertainty, it may just be necessary to simulate things because we cannot solve it for for the optimum anymore. So we just build a simulation and put in numbers that we assume that we would set to learn how the system performs. That's mm -hmm. not optimization, that's simulation. And we're going to cover quite a bit of that, especially because in that last section in week 10, we are going to do queuing theory so and, and discrete events. Because if you're doing service management, if you're yeah. doing certain detailed production planning problems, you need to be able to model on a unit by unit basis. And that's where queuing and discrete event comes in. And most of our practical work is going to apply simulation. So you need to yeah. be set up for that. Yeah. And in real problems, real projects, uh, what we are doing is uh, combining several of these tools. So at the very beginning, we start trying to uh, uh, build a model, an optimization model, which is a simplification of the reality. But at least we are going to try to understand the main trade-offs and find the optimal solution. Then once we have that and we want to add more reality and complexity to the problem, we need to move to this sto stochastic technique. Yeah. We need to add these simulation techniques in Absolutely. order to add this reality to this problem. Absolutely. So we are combining uh, in the real problems uh, some of these uh, techniques. Yeah, it's always a combination, right? We are yeah. kind of cutting them apart to uh, to teach them, but essentially in to solve them, you need to combine them. So kind of interesting picture that we have here from our poll. Um, I'm surprised constraint optimization is uh, is very high with almost 50% of, of interest here. Simulation is always, because I know you guys, uh, you, you know that the real world is complicated, so you need to simulate yeah. stuff. And you're, of course, interested in um, simulating things. And unfortunately, despite my pitch hypothesis <laughs> testing, <laughs> Uh, is, is, is not so famous. Yeah, but for any research project or uh, any any testing yeah. you want to do, you, you, you will end in using that. But yeah. I, I agree. I also, my we favorite topics are also the yeah. other ones. So <laughs> we I all struggle with that, right? Yes, we know. Um, let me do some quick course scheduling. Um, and then I will check if we have interesting questions to cover. Um, so the course schedule is we started already on September 4th, 5th with week zero. We are currently in week one, releasing week two tomorrow. Course ends in 5th of December. So you're all free after that. But the next three months is spending time with us. <laughs> um, enrollment deadline is September 26th. So that's next the week. The coming right? Wednesday. The yeah. coming no, Wednesday. This, this Wednesday, no, the next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. So if you have any people that you think they should enroll, please let them know that's the last week they can do and join us. Um, and verification deadline is one week after that. So if you want to become a verified student, you need to do that until October 3rd. Just to highlight, we have these 
four content weeks, um, have one week, one off week to prepare for the midterm exam. And the midterm exam will open on October 17, be open for, 20, uh, for, for seven days. So due date is October 24. Yeah. And then we have, again, four content weeks. Then we have one week off to prepare for the final exam. And after that, we open the final exam on November 28, which will be, again, open for seven days. Yeah, and one minor comment here, uh, the uh, meter and final is open for one week. But once you decide to open the exam, this is going to be a time exam. This means that once you start the exam, you only have four hours in order to complete the meter or four hours to complete the final exam. Right. Um, if I, you want to cover a little bit about how you're becoming a verified student? Yes. So as we mentioned, enrollment is open. Um, anyone with any interest in supply chain management can still enroll for free. Um, if, uh, if you want to pursue for a certificate, the only way to do that is to become a verified student. So to become a verified student means that first, you need to upgrade your status. And to upgrade your status, you need to go on the right side of the main uh, page of the course and click on upgrade and pay for the $200. The second step is to verify your identity. So let's go to the next slide because we have more details here. So once you uh, click on upgrade, uh, you pay the $200. There are two ways, credit card or PayPal. Um, once you complete that, that, I highly encourage you to go through the second step, go through the ID verification process. You need a webcam, you need an ID card with your picture and your name need to be exactly the same name that you have included in edX platform. Um, we need to verify your identity. If you have any issue during the ID verification process or during the payment process, please contact directly with edX support at info at edX.org because all of the verification process relies uh, completely on edX. Uh, yeah, this is all. It's a, it's a simple process, but definitely uh, the deadline is important. We cannot extend the deadlines. And in terms of the benefits of being a verified learner, as I mentioned, the certification. So if you have a clear idea that, yes, I want to have a certificate in SE0X, or I'm considering to go through the micro master credential program, you need to become a verified learner. This is the only way to earn the certificate. This is the only way to pursue for the micro master credential. In addition to that, uh, we are providing um, like uh, extra services. We are providing live events for verified people. This first live event is open to anyone that is enrolled in the course. However, the second and the third live event is only for verified learners. We are also providing supplemental material. These are not core material, but are uh, like more advanced uh, cases or master pieces that are connected to the topics and, and show you applications of the techniques that we are explaining in SE0X. Sometimes in SE4X, in SE3X, we are adding interviews with experts, industry experts, because we want to be in this reality. So this supplemental material, we are like going, going uh, deeper into the contents. Um, also, um, I learned that most of our verified learners, they are very active in our SEX community. They are also more of, most of them part of the MicroMaster portal and taking advantage of this SEX a global network of learners. So these are some of the benefits that we have observed for verified uh, learners. Let's move to the next one, Alex. Yeah, now we, we are also offering group enrollment. This is what we call program enrollment. This means that if you now you have a clear idea that you want to pursue for the MicroMaster credential and complete the five courses plus the CFX, you can pay in advance for the whole program. And in this case, you are going to take a 10% discount. So instead of paying $1,200 for the whole program, you are going to pay $1,200 minus uh, $200. Uh, sorry, minus $120, the 10% the, the discount. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can do uh, this program enrollment 
also for companies, there is an option to do, for companies, um, organizations, they can do batch enrollment. This means that if they are cons considering to send 10 employees or more, they can buy a batch enrollment for these 10 or more employees. Uh, one example is General Electric. They recently sent 50 employees to pursue the whole program, and they, they buy these 50 coupons and distribute them on their employees. So it's also an option that companies can pay for this program and, and do this batch enrollment. So batch enrollment for organizations and companies, go to the next one, program enrollment to anyone, any learner that wanted to pursue for the for the credential can do this program enrollment. The only thing is that this means that you need to pay in advance and you are going to have this 10% of discount. You must be enrolled within 24 months. This means that it, it, we expect that you complete the whole program in 24 months. Um, typically, I need to tell you that most of our learning completed in 18 months or less. So. Yeah, okay. and then you receive the coupon code and you go through through the process. So one question that my, our learners have uh, that comes up is, can I also do all, everything in audit and then at the end, if I like the program, I just sign up for the CFX, pay the whole amount and do the CFX? This is a great question, but the answer is no. This is not possible. You need to decide if you want to become an verified learner or not before the verification deadline per course per run. And you need to be a verified learner in this specific RAM before week four in order to pursue and earn a certificate in this specific run of the course. So you need to make the decision in the case of SC0X before October 3rd. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I cannot just jump in no. at any point. I no. need to follow need the course. You need to follow the course yeah. because then you are going to have also this additional benefit that I mentioned, live event, supplemental material. Um, yeah. And so certification, certificate is only for verified learners. Perhaps you can elaborate a little bit on these uh, on that supplemental material because um, I think our learners need to understand what that actually means. Uh, sure. Two questions of whether that is really helpful or if that amends the contents, if that is really necessary to understand it. So what's what's that benefit? Maybe Brittany can also jump in here and sure. tell her tell, tell her take on that. Yeah. So in terms of the graded assignment, final exam and midterm, I would say that you do not need this supplemental material. The core material for graded assignment, midterm and final are uh, delivered through the videos. So you need to watch the videos. I really recommend you to uh, solve the quick questions and the practice problems. And with that, this is what we consider the core material of the course. You will be ready to pass and complete graded assignment, meter and final exam. Having said that, uh, we are providing this supplemental material. This is additional material that definitely uh, in some cases are going to help you to understand better or to better understand real problems, real cases. We are providing as a sample of supplemental material. Sometimes we are providing additional practice problem, but as I mentioned, are additional. We are not going to prepare a specific graded assignment based on supplemental material. Sometimes it's just a master thesis or a capstone project that one of our SEM residential students have completed, mm -hmm. um, illustrate an example of how to apply one of, of, of more than one of the techniques that we are explaining in SC0X in a real uh, project with a company. Sometimes is an interview with an expert, and we are asking the expert about the future. How how are you applying these techniques? How is your day to day? How these techniques can can help you to better manage your supply chain management? These kind of things. So, okay. I would say things that are really uh, are very interested, uh, but uh, additional things. Yeah. So to, it's that. Yeah. Do you have any? Yeah, I think it your... enriches your experience. It's more than just trying to get the grades and get through the course it's more about like actually growing as a supply chain professional okay. and so that's what the supplemental materials offer awesome cool. great yeah um so we're a little bit um running out of time i just want to make sure that we cover at least how our platform is set up sure. before we do that i'm releasing one poll to get an idea of how much time 
you want to spend uh, on the course and later on then see how Brittany perceives that uh, feedback. Um, let me just quickly go to my slide deck here. There we go. Um, so do you want to cover that? This is a very quickly. Uh, in all of our SEX courses, we differentiate two, two spaces. Learning space, where we provide the videos, the quick questions and the practice problem. And we really encourage collaboration. We encourage you to go through the discussion forum and ask as many questions um, that you have related to that. Um, create the study groups and collaborate with your peers. Assessment, this includes graded assignment, homework, weekly homework assignments, meter and final exam. This is an individual work. That's why we do not allow any collaboration in the assessment space. That's why we do not allow you to post any comment, any question related to a graded assignment, meter or final exam question in the, for, in the discussion forum through the platform or through any other means. So uh, you have the email account, uh, sc0x uh, help at mit.edu and you can ask those specific questions that you have related assessment and Andrea and Alex and the whole team will be here trying to help you but uh, no post or collaboration in assessment yeah so what does that mean for whatsapp groups and and these things uh, how do we think about that so definitely if you want to share a new about SEM if you want to share a comment related to the video or some concept that you are struggling with, we are totally fine to have a WhatsApp, WhatsApp study group and help each other to learn more. Right. We know that collaboration is, is a, a, a great source of learning and, and we really encourage that. The only thing we do not, we, we want to clarify is that the assessment is an individual work and I need to, to assess every learner, each individual, their knowledge so this is the only thing that you cannot collaborate at all is regarding assessment regarding okay. the other thing yes very welcome to collaborate that makes sense yeah um so looking at my poll yeah uh, students have responded um i have uh, so leading is seven to eight hours a week they want to spend it's uh, almost a third yeah. uh, another third almost says well it's probably be something like nine to ten hours and the rest says six hours or less or 11 to 12 or even 13 or more hours. So Brittany, what, what's your take on that distribution? Yeah, I think that seven to eight hours is realistic as an average, but there are certainly weeks that take longer or if you're exposed to a brand new software, um, you know, and you want to learn it and kind of play with the new software, um, there's a lot of opportunities to be exposed to like SAS or, AMPL, Ample, do you call Ample. it? Yeah. 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 So um, those are times when if you dive into exposure to a new software, you may be spending more time. Um, and then, of course, just depending on um, how easy something is to you or how familiar it is to you, uh, you may be putting in more hours if something's unfamiliar. So then you would also say then probably that across the course, across the eight content weeks and the preparation, your time will fluctuate, right? So Absolutely. some weeks will be more easy to you because you have been exposed to that before, because you're a more deterministic person or more stochastic person. So it may also fluctuate, right? Is that what you experience yeah, too? Yeah, that's true. And just try to pace yourself. So um, if you are a working professional like I was, I tried to um, break up doing the lesson one videos and then take a break, take do the lesson two videos and i typically was working on like the graded assignment over the weekends mm -hmm. but um if you pace yourself that way you'll be less likely to burn out so yeah, that makes sense <laughs> so yes. it's it's possible yeah, there is a absolutely. lot of effort behind but if you organize well if you allocate certain time yeah. every single week uh, to do that uh, i i think it's something that absolutely definitely might help yeah, yeah. so we're almost out of time, um, perhaps we can just quickly show the students two uh, of our really cool components that we have in our course, right? Because the students, I guess, they know that we have videos as that's the core content that Chris presents. We have the practice problems and the quick questions to train the problems, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the preparation for the graded assignment. I think that's yeah. something that our students have already taken uh up on but maybe we talk about sandbox quickly sure 
Sure, these are interactive problems. This has been developed by the MicroMaster team, uh, Connor Makowski, our digital learning fellow. He, he has de developed these uh, cool uh, tools that is a way for you to interact with the problem. This is, a, for instance, a, a, a linear programming model, and you can play with the value of the uh, fun uh, objective function change that and see the effect on the on the problem or change or modify the constraint change the value and see how this is going to affect the solution of the problem so it's just a way for you to apply the concept that we have reviewed in the videos and play with them and try to just have fun play and fix and understand better understand this concept so it's kind of an additional help for you yeah but you just try it out and if you do a practice problem maybe you can put in some numbers here to check if what you're doing how the graphical representation of that is get more into the intu intuition yeah. into that right and i just wanted to add it any feedback that you have related to any of our problems sandbox uh, whatever share with us we are really really open to receive your feedback indeed this is the Four time, fifth time, Fifth-time. we are running a C0X. Yeah. And believe me that this run is much better than the previous one and the previous better than the previous one because of the feedback that we are receiving. We take it very ser seriously and we really are very open to improve our courses based on your feedback. So do not hesitate to share this with us. And yeah, be active. Be active in the discussion forum. It's a great space. It's a, re a resource that you have there and you have a, a lot of professionals from all over the world that can help you the amazing group of our community teaching assistant they, they are super helpful and more than that also peers your peers your colleagues this is a great uh, source of, of knowledge too yeah. so yeah. so whenever you stumble across a problem and you don't really get how it's meant how you could solve it go first into the forum and check if there are threats there because you have a good chance that other learners have stumbled across the problem too and you can just read up on that before you spend hours and hours and hours of time to solve a problem by yourself. Just check what the community has developed already. So that's a really important and helpful resource that some of our students just forget about. And we just wanted to highlight that quickly okay. here. Yeah. Um, we are out of time. So much stuff to talk about. And we have so many questions. I see that the community has started answering their questions Great. for each other. We have couple of CTAs, uh, Active, Param, Lance, Chris, I've seen, I think, that are answering questions. Ramon was also online. So you read up on that too. Um, let me jump to the live events, just highlighting that we are going to have two more live events that are dedicated only for the uh, verified students. One deep dive that is going to be happening on October 16th covering uh, a linear programming problem probably that I did uh, with a colleague here at CTL. It's a pretty exciting project. I'm looking forward to that presentation. Yeah. And I've invited Chris Kaplis, your uh, instructor, instructor uh, for November 27 to do problems for practice. So any problem that you come across during the course, and I wanted to ask Brittany that, but we're just out of time here. Any problem that you come across that you think, hey, can I solve that with linear programming or can I do a hypothesis test on it? Throw that on us in the problems for practice. And we're trying to at least give you an idea of how we would approach it with the toolkit that we have provided at that point in the last eight weeks. Definitely. That's the idea here. Open the pool of the time of the slot time slot for the live event. I uh, should I just ask that quickly? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm just asking you quickly what good what is a good time for a live event? So we have been working on the assumption that uh, 1500 or 1400 UTC is a good time for you guys. Um, let's see what the community out there thinks. Uh, and maybe uh, we can include that in future yeah. settings. As always, we will try our best. But as you know, we have learners from all of the time zones. So it's really hard to find the optimal <laughs> time let's, for everyone. So, let's close yeah. that with 
MOOC community and you have something yeah. to say so about that. So this right? is something that I'm fascinated about this program because in a very spontaneous way it's happening. And it's happening that students from many different cities, they are uh, having meetup groups, study groups, people from uh, Germany, from Peru, from Chicago, from Hong Kong. Um, and it's great. Uh, we are very happy. I also need to say thank you to Arthur Grau. He's our community manager and he's really behind this uh, creating this community of SCX learners. So I, I think that at this point, this is one of the uh, big things that you can get from this program, this uh, being part of this community of SCX learners. So just to show that this is happening, um, take advantage of that. Um, yeah. Cool. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you guys for uh, joining. I have seen almost uh, 200 uh, viewers at the same time being with awesome. us today. So it's a pretty good reception here already. Thank you very much, Eva, for taking the time to My explain uh, all of the program that you have built up to us. I think it's very valuable for the students that just joined our courses to understand how it works actually and what kind of paths there are. Brittany, thank you very much for yeah, joining us awesome. and giving us uh, some insights. I think our learners have so many more questions for you. I saw that uh, direct, directly questions were posted, perhaps you have a chance to sign up to SC0X and just give them some feedback on the forums, yeah. if that's okay with you, maybe. Um, guys, thank you very much. I'm looking forward, um, just reach out to me as your course lead uh, or our TA, Andrea, uh, who is mainly doing the, the emails or our CTAs. We are all here just to help you make the most of that learning experience. Um, welcome to the course again. And we are looking forward to the next uh, 12 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. guys. Thank, Thank you. you.